I'm alone at last. Pum -pum. I'll chase you to the edges of hell. Pumpy. Sorry, buddy. It seems like your friend is still after you. Hey, guys! My name is Megadude454, but you may call me Mitchell, and welcome back to Let's Play Glitter Next 2. Kind of mixed it up last time, but hey, we all make mistakes. Last time, we went through the Initiation Wood Sea, and we saw a couple of things that you can get with fame. I've now grinded up to 66 fame. Honestly, not that hard once you are more of an appropriate level for previous areas with your Ranger character. Um, that's just the thing I recommend. Rangers are one of the fastest classes in the entire game. And they can move quickly on grass and a couple other terrain types. Either way, let's go ahead and talk to Yoji. You've exceeded 30 fame! You've definitely surprised this old codger. Here, take this. We get the artifact widen. This is one heck of an artifact, believe you me. All spaces ahead of the space you place this in will have their effects doubled. If you place more than one widen, the effect will be compounded. Two times, three times, four times, etc. Think Dungeons and Dragons of Multiplication. So if a two times is next to a two times, you get three times instead of four times. So it'll become increasingly powerful. However, your mana consumption will increase proportionally as well. So be aware of that. Wait, there's more! If you place widen in an ability magic space, the range of your skills will increase. So... See how each skill is affected, you should observe it for yourself. Whew, that's it for my explanation. If you need more information, check out Dictionary from the menu screen. Which, we do have, in fact, a dictionary indeed. I believe his next reward is at 65 fame? Hi, Mitchell. A VIP-only shop is opened up in the ship. You should go pay it a visit. I indeed. We got our next reward, and... I doubt it's possible. The next up is 70... Okay, I was wrong on the 65 fame. I think... It goes from 30 to 50, and now we're at 70, so I'm only four fame shy. I might even do that in the video itself, just to really show how that process goes. But what he's talking about is the Black Market Store, which is actually going to open up a few more classes, believe it or not, for us. Talk to this character. Yo, we got a real bonanza of imports. And here we are. We can buy widens for an atrociously high... 777,777 gold. We can buy the ninja class for 2,000 gold, the dragoon class for 3,000 gold, the shaman for 4,000 gold. We can summon immortals for 500 gold, but ugh, you don't want to know what immortals are. They are they are nasty. You can also buy fame. That's right. You can buy fame. Uh, you can also set the tavern background music as the opening, which I may do that. You can set Magic Circle background music as the previous area, so rather than have that. You can edit the background music, or set the background music for the tavern as the edit BGM. Uh, you can have the always edit status, which means no matter your equipment, you can have your own custom art on it, which I'm not very good at that, that's why I haven't really explained it very much. But yeah, you can essentially create your own art for your weapons and stuff. And that's about it. I will definitely be getting these. Um, the fast way to do it is to sell the widen you just got. Seeing as it's 777,777 gold, if you were to sell that, you get 333,334 gold. You get about half for it, which actually that's not very accurate, is it? It's more like 300, 360, no, 307, no. 388,889-ish, you get about 4, 400,000 gold, which will basically set you for the rest of the game. I am not even kidding. You will have enough gold to buy whatever your heart desires. Granted, though, I don't know why that's so expensive. I will probably buy this as well, because you're not going to hear the background music of, or you're not going to hear the opening very much with this playthrough, because I'm not going to start there at all. Uh, at 70 fame, I do believe the the Orangians will open, which is why I said we will be getting the fame on screen, probably. Uh, I have leveled everyone up to level 7, and I've also improved everyone's equipment. Everyone's now wearing the rugby uniform. It is arguably the best gear we can get right now. Uh, you're probably wondering why... No, you're probably not wondering that, because I'm only on three of these magic circles, other than my own. Uh, I'm an egotistical prick, and I'd like to play through most of the game, per the norm. Let's go ahead and go through more Dark Elf Grotto. We will be beginning with the second floor. 
Oh, this one. I remember this one. We actually get to... I actually don't remember this one very well. Hmm. If I'm not terribly mistaken, it's playing with a lot of switches. Which, you know, it's puzzle intensive, so to speak. Not really well. There we go. Uh, I actually think, yeah, this set of packs is taking 100% of the damage. So that'll be fun. I like that, even though I'm not using it. Uh, um, I bet you can put two and two together, but if you're on fire, if you run through water, you'll put it out. I figured I'd just show that off real quickly. And, oh, I thought somebody fainted. But I actually obtained a couple things. And you're done. We'll put the switch. And now we can use that teleporter. Or, yeah, this little thing is a teleporter. It'll bring us back to the entrance. Which you saw the exit point, I'm sure. But I, like anyone else who'd play this game in their right mind, am a bit of a loot whore and would like money. Um, it's actually common, yeah, to put heal traps in the water, to basically make a healing spring. So if you see water, look for heal traps. Probably not the best case to look for in ranchins, though. Just a word of advice. <laughs> That'll happen a lot. Um, this game's tile placement is very much grid-based, so the direction of traps fire off is going to be aligned with said grids. And if you're not on the grid, so to speak, like, the game doesn't register you on that grid tile, you're not gonna get hit. So just keep that in mind. I don't think you can really say the same about, uh, attacks, though. I suppose you can. Anyway, what are we going to talk about today? Um, the fact that I'm batch recording now. Yeah. Um, I'm just recording these all in a bunch. Which, you know, I know a lot of YouTubers do that. It's very efficient. V very smart thing to do. Now packs have fallen. And that is to reduce my defense. So, uh, I think this or the next video I record is going to be the last in that batch session. Just primarily because I want to see the uh, output of what people think of this video series or this let's play. Um, there we go. Toril is now level 8 with more attack. Pax also level up despite feigning. Uh, I think that's because I put him on some EXP bonus stuff. Gene's level 8. You'll actually probably notice that I, the character, am level 9. That happened as a bit of a fluke. Because I didn't realize how quick one can level up when you put yourself with a, um, a bunch of EXP up modifiers. <clears throat> Anyway, we have... we have a moment with Lamb. Mitchell, could you please listen to my confession? Before I came to Arcanicella, I committed a mortal sin. Ah. <laughs> sure, Lamb. Sure you did. No, it's true. They even wrote about it in all the newspapers. What? How about you? What'd you do to deserve getting sent here? Ah, uh, no idea. Did you maybe do that? Or perhaps, you know... It was one of those kind of things, huh? You don't have to hide it from me. Uh... I see what it has. I haven't atoned enough for my own sins, so you can't fully trust me yet. I understand. So, could you let me look after your armor? I'll polish it till it shines like the sun. If you want to know more about my past sins, just talk to Modan. He's got all kinds of convincing evidence. Lamb's past sins. Oh, you must be talking about that. Believe it or not, Lamb led a rebellion against her home country. What? <laughs> you can find the details in our local paper. It was a worldwide event when it happened. <laughs> Aren't you impressed that we get a fresh newspaper every morning? Uh, yeah, actually. Where the hell is it coming from? Yeah, you should try actually reading it, Pecora. It's probably better for you than that animal how-to book I saw you reading earlier. I don't like reading newspapers. All those articles are just too hard to understand. What's the world coming to? Today's youth won't even touch a newspaper. Deplorable. Hey, you aren't like that, are you? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I am. I didn't see it in any paper, but did Mouton maybe steal some priceless book from his country's national library or something? I'm actually going to believe that that was right. Uh-oh. Akora, you're just awful. You neglected a national event and a... 
and actually managed to worsen your country's economy for it. Ah, all right. Just registered the first one. We're all good there. Oops. There we go. Mm, don't remember that. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> the past is past, you know? What's important is right now. I mean, you're right about that. We're living in the now, and the present moment is everything. So, just for future reference, I have to ask, what'd you do to get yourself sent here, Mitch? <laughs> My guess is you're a political prisoner. Am I right? Mitchell, nobody will blame you for not remembering what happened. We're all in the same boat here, so don't worry about it, Mitchell. What did I do to get sent to Arkanacella? Because apparently everyone here is a criminal. Huh. I'll leave that up for you guys to decide. But at any rate, let's continue dungeoning onward. I lost my train of thought, but yeah, I... Believe it or not, after I made all my characters, there was a loose plan on how everyone got sent here. Uh, Pax probably is the most unbelievable of all of them. Primarily because he's based off of a paladin character. Obviously, he's a guardian. And the whole idea is... He, he, the, the reasoning behind what Pax did to get here is probably... If this happens a lot, because Pax isn't actually a character I created. It's one of my friends. Um, and, and my friend... My friend roleplays Pax in an interesting way. Pax is meant to be a kind of a dirty Pax. The issue with that is Pax isn't a dirty paladin in the game we're playing. Um, not gonna point fingers at anybody. Somebody messed up somewhere along the way. But, Pax is a little too honest, even for a high bluff skill. Uh, he's a little too friendly for a high intimidate skill. Etc, etc. But he was chosen by his god nonetheless. And his god expects a number of things of him. In the campaign that we are playing, Pax has messed up on numerous occasions, and his god has forsaken him on numerous occasions. Uh, or actually theorizing that he might actually die, and if that happens, from what I overheard from the DM, bad things will happen. Lots of bad things. So, what I'm interpreting from this, and the reason, kind of part, part of the reason why I include Pax, is he died with his god still mad at him. And that is his sin. He basically screwed over an entire country because he couldn't fix things up with oh holy holy man in the sky which you know a little unreasonable of a god sure but I mean it can happen uh, everyone else Jean is a thief obviously otherwise I wouldn't have made her a ranger because rangers are good with daggers and bows uh, Toro is a pirate believe it or not Gene and Coral are both my characters. Um, Gene was meant to be um, more of a of a character that just not necessarily evil or anything, but certainly out for herself in a way, and out for her friends whenever she made them. She was also she had a nasty habit of pickpocketing people who were her friends just to see what they had, surely to do that, which obviously would get her into a lot of trouble. I would imagine the worst thing she did... I got Pax killed again. <laughs> Go figure. Um, I would imagine the worst thing she would have done... Because in the campaign, she died relatively early. Because she, she didn't get to do a whole lot. I imagine she would have pulled off a grand heist against the Empire. Which would have gotten her here. That grand heist could have messed up the economy. And could have led to a lot of bad things. Ultimately. As everyone... I leveled up twice. Huh. Alright then. Well, that definitely means I'm a sub-character for a while. Uh... Da, 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 da. Who are we gonna use? I think we'll use Toral this time. Speaking of which... Yeah, Jean died relatively early. Like I said, if she were to live long enough, she would have pulled off some sort of grand heist against the Empire, which would have sent the economy in all sorts of influx and would have just ruined everything. Toral is a pirate. You know, you, you steal and kill enough people, I'm pretty sure you get sent to Arganacella. But her backstory was relatively simple, so I guess in this universe, she would be a bit more ferocious, to say the least. 
Uh, this map I don't quite remember either. I'm thinking of a couple different maps that have, like, a very similar tile set. I definitely know that the Dark El Dorado is only four floors. But yeah, could, could you imagine a sword mage pirate? Yeah, I basically made one. Uh, extension class from the complete arcan- I just got Gia killed. Wonderful. That's a lot of my defense gone, I think. Or offense. Uh, yeah. It was an expansion class from Complete Arcana. Which is a 3. Point, I think it's just a straight 3.0 expansion book. But it's basically a sorcerer, if a sorcerer can wear light armor. I need to be more careful. Getting all my targets just killed. There we go. Long moment of silence for the shield being raised, my good fellow. And, and madams, I'm not leaving you girls out here. Um, what other characters? Mia. Mia is an experiment from the Empire in her campaign. Same campaign universe as where Toril and Jean are from, just handled by two different DMs. One's a co-DM. Um, I'm not entirely sure what would get Mia sent here. She's not necessarily the evil alignment. She's more of a chaotic good character. So, maybe she just killed the wrong person. Uh, Jenna is just an invented character that I just threw in because I didn't know what to do with her. And as for what I did, no idea. Nah, <laughs> probably just here because I'm an asshole. I, I consistently say, but I've not really displayed those traits other than me swearing like a sailor, as it were. I've been pretty mean to the party members so far, and I'm the guy controlling them, remember? Oh, this... Ah, yes, this is a boss. All right. This... This is not a nice boss. Excuse me, which... I gotta be careful. Because I done goof. And we are gonna be in for a world of pain. I gotta be careful. Crap. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, we're gonna be redoing that for certain. Uh, yeah, remember when I said the fourth floor of every dungeon is a boss floor? I wasn't kidding. This is an actual boss. I think... It's short enough I think I can manage on my own to keep you ladies and gents entertained as I get back to that point. Maybe. I'm not entirely sure. Still, still warming up these rusty old gears to the whole let's playing business. But yeah, basically all the characters I've made have, in one way or another, committed a sin, or potentially will commit a sin, in their respective universes. And have thusly died. Because, I mean, every character I've mentioned so far has died. The only exception is Mia, who hasn't even seen the light of campaign yet. And then Jenna, who's just a straight made-up character. Which, understandably, Jenna isn't... You know, probably never gonna see the light of day unless... Ooh. Oh, right, because we dropped all our items. So that's just a demonstration of a mechanic. What's in the red chest are randomized. So, if you don't like what you get, you can always die. And let them respawn that way. I wouldn't recommend it, though. Too much is lost in terms of experience and gold to let that continually happen. Um, I don't want to charge at it because I want to save my SP for the boss. We're definitely going to try to range him to death. Deal. Get out of front of this thing. Go. And Bethgar is taking all the damage. Do your attack, come on. There we go. You're dead. And now I, I want to handle the flame sisters. And definitely not get killed. There we go. Simple enough. And really, it's grinding. Ah, that cherry armor had trash on it? That's gotta be like the worst piece of equipment I've ever seen. If you didn't know, I 
didn't realize there was more equipment in the equipment shop, but cherry armor is available, and it's a defensive plus two. So trash cherry armor is a defensive one. Worse than the arcane robe. It is, like, not even useful. Uh, there's no heal traps in here. It's there. Not that I can see. Well, we're going in ham. And we are going to heal first. Ah, again with that. I wasn't on the right grid pile. There we go. Alright, we are going to get that ready. Because we're basically going to throw fire at him. So as you imagine, it's a tree. We need fire. I can actually talk about this boss. He's not terribly difficult. Uh, in this case, there's a bunch of... I forgot that went to the side. This one will find standing in front of him. Okay, move. Yeah, you, he's got a very easy to recognize pattern. Right now he's just gonna try to attack us that way. And now we can kill him. Drops a crap ton of loot. Or money, I should say. And we're done with most of our party intact this time. Now that I remembered that there was in fact a boss. Because I, I said last time, every fourth floor from this point onward is going to have a boss. So, be ready for that. There we go. This is more appropriate. We're now leveling up faster in a way. There we go. I'm level 12. You get some nice stats. You don't usually see an attack of defense up a whole lot. Bethgar leveled up. And there we go. We have completed that floor. Ranjins. Oh. Oh, Ran... Oh, the doy. Okay, so we just unlocked the secret shop. I thought Ranjins were unlocked at 70 fame. That was my bad. I haven't played this game in a while, can you tell? Uh, but Ranjins are probably my most favorite feature of this game. Uh, the story, obviously, is kind of laughable in terms of interest. But the dungeon crawling aspect of this game is very interesting. We now have a new magic circle for me to use, which I believe I'm going to use. Um, another setup, or something I noted, is here we have alert allows gate revival good for ranjins, and then focuses on speed and ability magic. We'll probably set that up for a primary circle. But you gotta look, if you're gonna go into a ranjin, you should definitely look for gate restores. 10% revive rate at Ranjin Gate. Handy, handy, handy. So this way, you can keep going through the Ranjin for longer. I'll just set her up later here. We will definitely call this setup good. Uh, I understand I'm using a bunch of relatively high-level characters, I think. So there's Pax, Mia... Toral and Jenna, so two level 10s and a level 9 and an 8 with a level 12. Generally speaking, with a Ranjin, you actually want to set yourself up with the higher level characters, but you don't have to. Now, another thing. There are two kinds of Ranjins. The, oh, you're the title guy. You're not a Ranjin. There is the Neogen. Hey ya! Want to take a Neogen? Well, good luck, friend. Which is pretty much just a straight descent down to what I would imagine is 100 floors of a dungeon. Every floor is about randomly generated. And you were probably thinking, well, that doesn't sound very fun. It sounds like when you get to the bottom, you're facing level 100 opponents or something. Well, how could that be fun? Uh, the kick is, is that as you go through every floor, the level of the next floor is randomized. You take a Trijun? Well, good luck, friend. Trijun's different. There are three separate dungeons. Each one has a hundred floors. There are transition points between all three dungeons. Admittedly, as you can see from this like little display in the background, if you want to get from normal to heaven, you would need to go through chaos. That's pretty much how that works, in a way. I don't believe that's how it always is, because I think you can go from normal to heaven. And heaven to Gorwin, definitely. Um, the thing with this is if you're a completionist, I think you have to complete the three separate dungeons as well. 
Like, you can go, like, 99 floors through normal, but then you have to complete the 100 floor in chaos, and that counts as a chaos completion. <laughs> so, this is a completionist hell. Um, if I had to get a little bit more in-depth with this tr with this ranjin. Normal is, like, normal circumstances, normal settings, so on and so forth. You're not going to see anything special in the normal dungeon. Chaos is harder. There's a lot more variance in the enemies. And the enemies are just... Dicks. They're nothing but dicks. And heaven is nicer. Enemies are difficult, but the loot is better. Whereas chaos is like, you know, you basically got normal loot, but heaven's enemy archetype. And the idea is, heaven's great for grinding, normal is good for the casuals, and chaos is for the sadistic people. Or the masochistic, I suppose is the better way to describe it. But just by looking at the amount of time I've been recording for, there's really no point in me continuing beyond this point. Let's go ahead and take an update with the possible purchasable items. We now have level 3 healing. I know I'm going relatively fast. We now have the mana up scrolls, which are... Whew, whew, those are real good. HP medium, so we have the level 2 stuff. Yeah, level 3 HP stuff. We can now go all the way up to a boost generator. So, like, level 5 for that. Level 2 SP Orberize. SP Debt. Which is interesting. Loan SP up to one-third of max SP for 10 mana. I think this is basically like SP Overcharge. I've never really used them. I'll have to experiment. Attack we can get up to the 4th level. Which is 4 attack for 16 mana. Which is really goddamn expensive. Defense is 4 defense for 12 mana. We have level 4 there. Um, I don't know if we always had access to the Wind Feather, but we now have access to the Angel Feather, which is a level 2 run item, and the Devil Wing, which is a level 2 walk item. We now have access to the Lucky Metal, which is a level 2 luck metal, and a Petite Drop, which is the drop rate up by 5 for 3 mana. There is no crit modifier, obviously. We now have Magic or Ability level plus 50% for 10 mana. That's minus 40%. I'm not entirely sure why. It possibly decreases SP cost. Magic efficiency level 2. And that's why you don't use control sticks, but I don't really have a choice. Ability efficiency number 2. Sorcery stability. Uh, slightly less likely for 3 mana. And then mana plus 3, which is the one of the better varieties. I think we can go all the way up to plus 5. So I'm actually going to buy a few of these on screen. Always handy to have these. Edit overrider, absolute edit, nothing else. Growth, we just saw we now have access to level 2 of the primary stats and a level 1 of mana. Which, if you put this on a sub-character and you let their mana go up every level, it kind of gets crazy. There's a reason why the main character gets mana up most of the time and sub-characters get primary stats up. Because otherwise, things would get crazy and you'd never have to make a sub-character stop being a sub-character. Weapons. Same level currently available. Armor. We can go all the way up to the Grimoire uniform, which has fire and water resistance, but is weak to piercing and blunt weaponry. Uh, ultimately, still weaker than the rugby uniform, but definitely more handy if you're going to go into a fire or water dungeon. Shield. We can now buy the Scale Shield which doesn't break easily. I I wouldn't doubt it, considering it's made of scales. Actually, we'll buy one, considering we don't have one yet. And I believe that is all we need to do for now. Next time, I will be entering a Ranjin, and we'll see how far we can get. If I don't fill a 30-minute video with a Ranjin, then we'll do some, some primary main story dungeon stuff. But until then... I will see you all in the next video. I've been making it 454, and I will see you later.